Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you some more about if statements in Python. More specifically, we're going to be looking at using comparisons inside of our if statements. So if you're following along with the course in the last tutorial, I talked to you guys about just the basics of if statements and we used a couple different Boolean variables. And depending on the values of those Booleans, we were able to do certain things. In this tutorial, we're going to look at another way to use if statements, which is with comparison. So instead of just using Boolean values, we can actually compare different values. So like I could compare a couple numbers or I could compare a couple strings. And depending on the results of those comparisons, we can do certain things. So this is going to be pretty cool. And this is really going to give you guys a full understanding of what you can do with if statements. So for this tutorial, I actually want to create a Python function. And this function is going to give us the maximum number that we pass into it. So this function is going to take three parameters as input, and it's going to print out the biggest number that we give it. So let's create this function. I'm just going to say def, and I'm just going to call it max num. And Inside of these parentheses, I'm going to specify that I want three parameters as input. So I'm going to say num1, num2, and num3. So basically, we're passing it three numbers, and this function will return the largest of the three. So in order to figure out which of these numbers is the largest, we're going to have to use an if statement. So I can say if and over here, I need to specify a condition, right? So I need to put like a true or a false value. And so what we can actually do is we can compare these different numbers. So I could say if num1 is greater than or equal to num2, and num1 is greater than or equal to num3. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm comparing these different numbers. So I'm saying if the first number is greater than or equal to the second number. And this is a comparison. So when you think about it, when we compare these two numbers, we're going to end up with a true or a false value, right? Num1 is either greater than or equal to num2 or it's not. It's actually a Boolean value, right? It's either true or it's false. Same thing over here. The result of this comparison is either true or it's false. So technically, I'm putting a true or false value in there. I'm just getting that true or false value by using a comparison. And you'll notice over here, we're using something called a comparison operator. And basically, this is just like how we want to compare them. So we're saying like greater than or equal to in this case. So down here, if this whole condition is true, in other words, if the results of these two comparisons end up being true, then we know that num1 is the biggest. So I can just return num1. I can say return num1. But we also want to check some other conditions. So I can say elif. And now I want to do some other comparisons. So I'm going to say else if num2 is greater than or equal to num1 and num2 is greater than or equal to num3. So I'm doing essentially what I did up here except for num2. So again, I'm comparing these different numbers. And this is going to end up being a true or a false value, depending on the result of the comparison. So down here, again, we can just return num2. Because if all of this is true, that means we're going to end up returning num2. And then finally, we can just say else. So if num1 isn't the biggest and num2 isn't the biggest, then we can pretty much assume that num3 is the biggest. So now we have our function. So down here, I'm actually just going to call this function. So I'm just going to say, actually, I'll print out the result. So I'll say max num, and we'll pass in like three, four, five. So we're basically calling that new function that we just made. And I'm going to go ahead and run this program. So you can see down here in the output, we printed out five because that was the biggest. If I was to change this middle one to the biggest, so we make the middle one 40, now it'll be able to take on that situation. And finally, I can make this like 300 and it'll be able to handle that. So no matter which number, num1, num2, or num3 ends up being the biggest, it's able to tell us without a problem. So these comparisons are a really, really, really common way to make if statements. And a lot of times 
you're going to want to be comparing different values inside of Python. So over here, we're comparing numbers, but we could also compare strings. So I could easily make these both like, you know, I could make this like dog and I can make this dog and I could say a different operator. So I could say like this double equal sign would mean equal. So I could basically say like if this string is equal to that string. So you can basically like compare all different data types. You know, I could compare numbers, strings. You could also compare Booleans. So once again, these are comparison operators and this one is greater than or equal to, but there's a bunch of other comparison operators we can use. So the most basic is just gonna be a double equal sign and that basically checks to see if the two values are equal. So it'll say like if number one is equal to number two. We can also say not equals and this exclamation point will basically mean not equal. So it's if num1 is not equal to num2. We also have greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And those are kind of all of the operators or all the, you know, the basic uh, comparison operators that you're going to be using in Python. So using comparisons is really awesome and there's going to be tons and tons of situations inside of Python where you're going to want to compare different values. So these can be extremely useful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.